Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity stopped the New World Order. Welcome to her Panwo TV. Today, as you've just seen, I'm at the Oxford Canal Terminus. This is Hythe Bridge Street in Oxford. And um, that there is part of the River Thames, or the River Isis as we call it in Oxford. Um, now these canals here, this is actually the, where the canal starts, right here. Um, this towpath here goes all the way up that way, it goes right through the north to the north of the city and if you if you feel inclined and you feel you've got the energy you could walk all the way to Birmingham on this canal. Personally I think I'll take the coach and maybe a hospital porter or an ex-hospital porter but I think that would stretch my legs a bit too much you know. Um, during the early industrial revolution as it says in 1790 this was this, this terminus was built. Uh, these canals, they, they crisscrossed the country, and they still do, and they were used to transport goods between factories, warehouses, and other things. Um, this is before the railways came along and uh, made these canals obsolete, but um, they were really were the kind of like the arteries of the early industrial revolution in Britain. And this here, this here was where all this area around here, where the car park is over the road, was all part of the terminus. You'd have, if you came here, um, 250 years ago you'd have seen huge piles of coal barges tied up all the way along through this through a base through the basin um, horses being watered and fed things like that now <clears throat> the thing is the canals are still in use today they're used for pleasure of course for pleasure cruises and canal boat trips are very very popular and for some people it's their home now um, if you've not seen it before to get some background into what's, what I'm about to talk about, um, I made a film a couple of years ago called But They Ain't Normal, and I'll put, I'll put it in the description box. I'll also make this video a, a response to that. Um, and I basically explained a little bit more about the Oxford boat people. I'm just gonna walk along, I'm just gonna walk along the uh, towpath now from the terminus area, and you'll actually see some boats moored. There's some barges moored by the side of the canal, exactly as they would have been 200 years ago. Now, these are absolutely beautiful. I mean, you can see here what people, people really go to town on their boats. And this one here, you see, big garden on the, on the top deck there, see? Big sort of like roof garden. And here we are, we see some more. Otter Magic. Otter Magic. They're, they've got lovely names, these boats, I'll tell you. They really do. We go further along here and we see uh, another one. No, no, no sort of flowers on it, but it's still somebody's home. And there's another one. There's, a, there's a loads of boats along here. Little TV area. All, all the trappings of, of home that you'd find in any house anywhere. I and mean, as I said in the, in, the, in the original film, you know, I knew I knew, know a guy who lives on one of these. I can't remember what it's called. He doesn't moor around here, but um, he sort of he has a nice, he has a boat, and he, his whole family live on it. And he he moves it around because he doesn't have a pop permanent mooring spot. And you're not allowed to stay in one place too long unless you've got a permanent mooring spot. Some of these people actually have their own mooring spots, and you can actually see this this uh, sort of verge on the edge of the towpath is actually their garden. I think there's one further up here, actually. Um, I mean, they, some, some of these people travel around a lot and they go to different places, and others sort of like tend to stay in the same place. <coughs> oh, there's someone with their, they put their bike on there and everything, and they dry their washing. It's home from home. And um, as, I, as I said in the But They Ain't Normal film, Oxford has a these enormous, these lot, wide, slow-moving waterways that interconnect. There's probably a few dozen miles of these waterways stretching all the way around the city. And it is, um, Oxford in a sense is kind of a, it's kind of a group of islands, really, rather than a, a single city, or rather than a sort of single place which is with a river going through it. The river, you know, this river sort of like splits all around. It's gonna, keep going along here. Now, uh, there's another important, an important aspect is of this whole 
situation is that these these people are under attack. This whole community is under attack. This is, this is where they get their water from and they throw their rubbish away. Now, um, I don't know if you've ever read, um, I think I mentioned this in the first film, I don't know if you've ever read the Dark Materials books by Philip Pullman. Brilliant, brilliant fantasy novels. Um, and it's really, really worth watching, but it's, um, he has these, these people in it called Egyptians, and um, he's based those people on the Oxford boat people. They are kind of his, uh, they're kind of the inspiration, sorry, somebody come in. They're kind of the inspiration behind that. Some people just go on holidays, see, these, a lot of these, some of these are holiday craft. People just take them out on holidays. They don't actually live on them all the time. But, um, Bill the lizard. <laughs> I mean, see, this. I think this this person has probably owns this moor in patch, and they've turned it into a little garden. Mm. <laughs> There's a whole. See, this, this is sort of like the terminus area. We go over this bridge, and I'll show you some a bit more. It kind of illustrates what I was talking about, and um, which is part of the uh, the problem that I sort of outlined in the film, in the first film. That's a kind of holiday cruiser. People don't usually live on those. They just they just uh, they just take them out for breaks. Now, well, this is the turning area, this is the turning basin, this is where they, turn, they as it says, turn round. Now, um, as I said, this community is under attack. I said that in the first film. Um, the reason they're under attack, well, you've just seen, you've just, you probably already know one of the reasons, because you've just seen it. Um, a few, I think a couple, last, the other week, I showed you a film, I made a film called Oxford's Reeve Gauche, which was about the, this little bohemian quarter in Oxford, down just off uh, between the Cowley Road and Ifley Road, this little area where there's all these new areas, there's, there's the inner bookshop and the Buddhist temple and the, the sort of non-conformist cafe and things like this. Well, that's not the only one. This, this, this what everything I've just shown you, just gets past this weir. I call it, is it, what's that? Is that a heron? Amazing. You don't see many of them, do you? <laughs> and this is this actually look here's a good example of what I'm talking about. That there is a solar panel. This person on this boat, King of Cubs, is generating their own electricity. Um, and this is the problem, this this community is under attack. And the reason is basically is what I was talking about in the last film. There's a... Um, this is another bohemian community. And the, the attack has taken many forms. Um, one of them is the destruction of what you see these boards here on the other side of the canal. Part of them is the destruction is that. Now the, the, these boards are surrounding what used to be the Jericho boatyard, which basically basically where they used to main, they used to provide repairs and um, sort of like refits. And they would even, um, you could even, they'd even build these boats. But they basically, that, you see, that's where they used to take the boats in. And there was a dry dock, and there was a building sheds, walk, workshops, and things like that. And it was a very, very old local business that stretched back, stretches back to the time when these canals were used for transportation of goods. The, um, it's all gone very sad. There was a big protest here when they shut it down. That's, Jer that's the Jericho Church there. I don't think Philip Pullman got involved in the protest, I don't remember. But, um, as I said, these, these, you saw the, the way these boats are, are, these people, someone there's generating their own electricity. Um, and that's just the start. A lot of these people grow their own food. 
Um, a very, very large proportion of them are self-employed compared to the general population. I think even maybe the majority of them are self-employed. And um, you have, um, uh, as I said, they, and as you saw, you saw the, the flowers they've got on them. You saw the decorations on the boats. Um, we, are, we are truly looking at a, a bastion of non-conformism. And that's why they're under attack. Now, as I explained in the original film, I mean, it's, the attack is many-fold. It's, it's partly the, the boatyard, as I showed you. And it's other things. It's, uh, as I explained, my friend, who was a porter, who's one of these boat people, he, um, he, they get letters through all the time, constantly. Get letters, demands, threats, um, you know, nasty warnings. You've moored your boat in the wrong place. You've tied it to a tree. You're not allowed to drive. You shouldn't be trying it to trees. You shouldn't tie your boat up to trees. You shouldn't be driving mooring irons into the ground. Things like that. Now, um, think about this. I mean, I mean, as my, as I explained, as my friend explained to me, a lot of these letters that are sent through are not legally. They're not even legally sustainable. They're not. They don't even make any serious points, and. It's almost like the people who are sending the letters just send them for the sake of it. I mean, you know, my friend, he just, as soon as he gets his letters, he phones up his solicitor and says, this is, this is another nonsense letter, right? Um, let's, go up on, let's go up on the bridge so we get a good view. And it seems to me that the authorities just want to keep the pressure up on these people. They want to keep, rather than make a le serious legal attempt to get rid of them, even though they do that as well, even when they're not doing that, they want to keep the pressure and the harassment up on them, they, harassment and pressure up on them, keep them, keep them uncomfortable, keep them worried, make them feel threatened, make them feel insecure. And so the, the motive is the motive is obvious. There's the underlying motive of the whole business is to make their lives as difficult as possible. And it's rather similar to what's going on at the moment with with Gary McKinnon. I don't know if you've been following that news story, but again, they're doing to him. They're, they're doing things to him now, which I don't seem to be able to. That's not going to get them anywhere. I don't think they're going to extradite Mc, Gary McKinnon. I don't think they can. But they don't want to let him go. They want to keep him. They want to keep him on tenterhooks for as long as they possibly can, just by just doing anything, just doing anything to keep dragging him through the courts. And it's very, very childish. It's very spiteful. It's very juvenile. But that's the mentality of the of these of this authority, these uh, Illuminati. Um, I say the word the authority. That's actually the word that Philip Pullman uses for God in his story. It's called the authority. Um, and I think, it's, so it's, it's the same mentality as doing that to Gary McKinnon, is doing that to these boat people. Hmm. Anyway, that's, uh, this is the Oxford Canal, very near close to the terminus. And um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing it and learning about the plight of the Oxford boating community. The real Egyptians. Hospital port has pride and dignity. Stop the new world order.